Oh, good morning, Motivation Church. Are you, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you excited to be here? Those at home, I'm so thankful that you've invited us into your living room today. Uh, I don't have a word for you. God's got a word for you this morning. Uh, I'm blinded right now, so if you haven't already taken a seat, take a seat. Please, please, please. Just be seated. Be seated. I am Aaron Back. I've been in the ministry for a number of years now, and I'm very grateful to call Motivation Church my home. I've been here uh, almost since the beginning. I've been praying for you for longer than since the beginning, but I'm so excited to be back with my family uh, sitting in the front row. You've seen her many times. I am going to give her her due, my beautiful wife, Bethany, uh, up front. Go ahead and clap for her. You want to do it. You do. If you clap for me, I mean, you're, it's nothing. If you're clapping for her, you're actually doing something. It's encouraging and moving forward. I hope that God does the rest for what's going to happen today. Hey, we've been in a series called Slow Down, and they tell me I have to stand right in here. This is the camera zone, but there's, we've been in a series called Slow Down. How many of you, have you, have you been enriched by what Pastor Travis has been saying of taking that moment? I find it really funny that when Travis asked me to speak today, I asked him, hey, you know, are you still going to be in that series? And he said, yeah, we're going to still be doing Slow Down, which I promptly looked at him and said, well, I don't have time to preach that sermon. Um, thank you for the one person who laughed in the back. I appreciate you. Uh, I, you ever reached that point? If you haven't, you re, you're probably eight years old in the, the house today, where you have you reached that point where you just don't have time. You just there's just no way. There's just no way to do it. And that's really what we've been focusing in on. On these, uh, Travis asked me to do this, and really, you know, I'm in the we're in the middle of looking for a house right now, and expecting my second child. Thank you, appreciate that. I'll give you a moment to applaud once again. Just uh, expecting our second child. We've been I've. I work full time, a little over full time, have a side job, a few other things we're doing, and you know, life, right? And if you're, I don't say all this to make you think that I have something that's bigger than yours. In fact, most of you are probably sitting there can list the 20 other things on top of what I just said that you're going through. And to think that I can take this book, to think that I can stop for a moment and speak to the living God about what it looks like to take all of that and slow it down is incredible. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you guys. Are they great? Aren't they awesome? Wow. That whole moment sounded like I was smarter or that I was more professional just because they were there with me, right? If you have your Bibles with you today, I want to turn to John chapter 11. So we're going to hang out in John chapter 11 in our series called Slow Down. I'm going to talk to you today about something I want to call the power of slow, the power of slow. John chapter 11, starting at verse 1. If you have your paper Bible, we're going to give you some time. If you have your, uh, your phone, you should already be there. I'm not really sure what we're waiting on for you. I'm going to grab my paper Bible. I, I, I always tell this story. I tell it every time. I may have even told it here that I always bring this one with me. I've got my phone. I love my phone. I use my phone probably more often for my Bible than I do paper at this point. But I love this story of a bus driver in New York, right? This guy has been driving buses in New York for forever, right? And he, uh, he stops uh, at one point because his, uh, his engine's smoking. So he pulls off to the side. He had just finished a devotion. He had been sitting uh, for quite some time, and he went to drive off, and the bus starts smoking. So he pulls over, and he rounds in front of the bus to, to have a look, and he gets a 9 millimeter bullet in the chest. Apparently, uh, in order to join uh, certain gangs and things, like that, you, had to, you had to take a guy out, right? So that's how it works. So a young guy, 9 millimeter, shoots him right in the chest. A few minutes later, that man stands back up, and got back on his bus and was very grateful that his study Bible was about that thick that he had put in his jacket that day. And I love that story because I, I want you to have a look at your phone real quick and I wonder which one of those would have stopped a nine millimeter bullet. Uh, so I always bring the paper with me just to, uh, I, if you're not laughing a little bit at that story, I don't know. It's, it's always a great reminder and it's always, there's something about it, right? Any paper fans out there, there's just something about opening it up, having it right there with you. We're going to turn to John chapter 11. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 3. It says this, 
So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Some background before we continue. Jesus is dear friend in the story. Perhaps you've heard this one. Maybe you've heard it multiple times if you've ever been in church. One of Jesus' dearest friends was a man named Lazarus. Two of his dear friends, the sisters that we're talking about here, Mary and Martha, are asking for Jesus to come and heal their brother who is deathly sick. That's where we're at. Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. I'm going to summarize a little bit in here before we continue. So first off, we can see it right here, right? The slowdown. The, uh, that makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely not. It doesn't make a lick of sense. If you've tried to slow down in your life, you're probably looking at your priority system and you're going, getting rid of that makes no sense. Stopping that makes no sense. None of this makes sense. Jesus stayed two more days for an urgent matter. Skipping down to verse 38, it says this, Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. At this point, Lazarus has been dead for four days. So not only did Jesus not make it in time for the death, I mean, it's been four days since the death of his sick friend. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them, but Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, did I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloths, his face wrapped from head in head in cloth. Jesus told to them, unwrap him and let him go. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that your word is alive and active. It's moving today. It's not a story from old. It's not something that we, uh, we inc- get encouraged by and take with. It's something that's living, breathing, and applicable to what we are doing today. And we thank you for it. Father, I pray that you do what you always do. Divide this word uh, thousands of different ways for our, our friends on, online and for those in the room, Lord God, that you would speak directly to them what you would have to say. May I decrease that you would increase in Jesus' name. Amen. The power of slow. So Jesus comes. He's got these very good friends. Think of your very best friend. I want you to think of them really quickly. Uh, They're very sick, and you have all the power in the world to heal them, bring them back, make them 100%, and you decide that you're going to wait two more days. It doesn't make any sense, the slowdown that Jesus takes in this. In what I want to talk to you about today, I have three points, and they're really not conjoined. You, you get a lot of uh, sermons, and they give you the three point, and it's the, here's the three P's of this or the T. Well, I, I want you to know that two of these are going to really bring about what you get from slowing down, and one of them is going to be how you slow down. How many people need that one, right? I needed that one. I got in here, and I'm like, all right, let's find it. Come on. Page cover to cover, man. Let's find it. Because life is incredibly busy. No matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, I promise you, your life is incredibly busy. The phrase has been coined over the last few decades or so. It's called hurry sickness. You ever heard of hurry sickness? Anyone ever hurry sickness? Hurry sickness is this. It's that we have gotten into a place where so many things are so fast and so convenient that we expect that we should fit more things in our schedule because of how fast and convenient things are, right? And it gets to the point where it becomes a sickness because you you will have higher levels of anxiety when you're not getting things done, right? How many people have ever been on a vacation and you were like, this is going to be great, and you hated like the first 24 hours? You, you know, or, or you get back and you need a vacation from your vacation because you were so much anxiety about what was going on, what was happening. You, I need to be busy, right? I need to get things done. Or you know that person. I'm not that person, but I know that person. They're in the room, so I won't point them out. 
my father's right there. Uh, so I, they're, that they like to try and schedule things on a vacation. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we've only got 24 hours in the day. So let's, uh, yep, we're going to go to every park in Disney. Here's the ride. I've drawn the map. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, we've got a few other hands raised. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, I know that. I, I picked you out. It was actually mom that did all that. Um, but there's somebody, right, that, that it's, it's the, the levels of anxiety of not being able to do. Do you remember, it's, it's such an old school style to think of how long it would take to wash clothes by hand, and hang them out to dry, or how long it would take to chop the wood to heat your home, or now you press the button, all of that, where the things that you and I take for only a few moments in our household would take like a whole day, and that person would be chopping, that person would be cleaning, that person would be cooking. They do all these things, and they're like, they have this little thing, and it's probably a foreign concept now, called free time. You heard of it? I, I knew it one time. I don't remember what, if I know what it feels like, but they had this concept of free time, the time to slow down, time to take the pace. Uh, we, we use this word in, in ministry, it's kind of a Christianese word at this point, and it just really means to take your vacation, take, but Sabbath. God creates the world. He takes a whole day. Did God need to rest? No, God doesn't need to rest. But he took a day to rest. Why? Because he wanted you and I to understand that this is how it works. This is how it works. I am one of those people that I have filled my schedule to the brim. It's, if there is an hour in there at some point, it's probably the hour that I sleep, right? If, and maybe someone else is out there that's the same way. And there's three things that we can get. Really, we can get it from almost any narrative of Jesus in the New Testament. I love this one because I feel like the story of Lazarus just really plays out every aspect of the gospel right there. I mean, I could, t I, I could talk all day on this passage, but I really want to focus today about the slow. It's a, we can see multiple places in the narrative, almost every story of Jesus, where he takes the time. The scripture tells us that Jesus would rise early in the morning to go be alone with the Father. He needed that slow down, that moment with Dad. It talks about, multi there's one beautiful one that I love, Jesus took naps. So if you're not a nap taker... Uh, be like Jesus, that's all. Uh, Jesus took naps in a boat while the world was being destroyed. I mean, it's an incredible storm right outside, and Jesus was taking a nap. I want you to ask yourself, do you think Jesus didn't know that storm was coming? He knew it was there, but he was still resting in the boat. Jesus took the time on multiple occasions to go to a wedding, have a party, hang out with friends. He did it. There is no mission in the history of the world more important or more urgent than the mission of Jesus Christ, and he still slowed down. He still slowed down. Three things I want, to get, I want to give you the first one today. I call it perspective is in the slow. Perspective is in the slow. I read another story recently. It was also in New York, actually. Uh, this guy, he loved his Corvette. Any car fans out there? Oh, he loved this thing. He, he, I mean, he spent, it was the Sunday drive, the Saturday drive, it was the all drive. He loved this car. And there's only one thing to do with fast cars, and that's to find as many opportunities as possible to go fast in them. So this guy would fly. He would go, and one day, he's driving through this neighborhood, way too fast in a neighborhood, and his side window shatters. Rock comes in. Hits the thing. He poof, hits the brakes, pulls over. There's this guy on the side of the road who had been throwing rocks. And he rushes this guy. He grabs him by the collar. He lifts him up. He's ready for all vengeance. And this guy is crying. And he stops for a moment. He drops him. And he goes, good, good, somebody stop my brother. And there's a man unconscious there who had just had a heart attack. The boy had no phone, had nothing. He had been throwing rocks the whole day trying to get somebody to stop and help him with his brother. Man's life was saved because of this. But I wonder in our lives, if we had the right perspective, would he have seen him if he had just slowed down? Do we have the right perspective? Are you seeing things from the right angle? So that's where we've got to start with perspective. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one because it's the next one. This is really what we gain when we slow down. 
right? We get a perspective on the world that's completely lost beforehand. People that need our help, people that God has called us to, people that, need, that we are in a dark world that needs the love of Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a moment to talk with someone, you don't have a moment to share that. We live in a world where there is so much suffering. There is so much right now injustice and sickness and all these things. And if you don't slow down for a minute, you're not doing anything for it. Right? What are we doing? And when we slow down, we gain the perspective. But here's the one I want to stick with for a while here. And this is the how. Right? We get this, great, I understand perspective. All right, we're going to be able to see more. We're be able to, to get, get things straight if we slow down. But how do we slow down? And it's my second one today. I want to stay with this one for a while. It is called priority is in the slow. Priority is in the slow. How do you slow down? I can look at my schedule. I've looked through my schedule multiple times. And truthfully, if I want to slow down, what do I've got to do? I get rid of something. I gotta stop something. I gotta take a little less time on this. So where is the priority system in our slow? Because that's what changes. If you've ever looked at your schedule and thought, that's not very important, I don't really need that, you probably never put it on your schedule in the first place. If you're, if you're like me, you look through all these things and go, they're all important. What are you talking about? I, I, can't, I can't quit my job. I can't you know, leave early from that. Well, I'm making extra money. Well, this is, the, this is an important thing here. You know, I, my kids this and my, my, oh, that time is important. And, I've got to, and then I realized in my schedule that I literally do what I've preached against for a decade now. I've preached against it again and again and again. I've given God my change. I've given my change. Where's your priority system? I've got $24 in a day, and I spend 23 and a half of it doing all the other things. And I go, God, I'm going to give you the third. I'm going to give you the 50 cents I've got left. I don't have a whole lot of time, but if you would speak to me, that'd be great. Hey, net, great, I'll see you next time. Thanks for this. Thanks for that. Now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, the priority system has to shift if you want to slow down. The priority system has to shift. And here's how it can shift, right? There is a power. I've called it the power in the slow. In the slow that the priority system screws up and God makes up. What do I mean by this? This is really simple. When I can sit around and go, God, I don't have time for you because of my job. God says, you don't have time not to be with me because of your job. Are you, are you, are you crazy? What I've said to God in that moment is my priority system says my job is so important that I can't get to you. And God is saying, if you get to me, it's not even important. Are, what I've, looked, I've looked him in the face and said, God, I'm terrified with my finances. I don't believe we're going to make it if I don't put in every dime, every minute, every second. And God says, I'm going to take care of you. You got to hang out with me. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you doing? Hey, God, God, you know, I really know that there's, there's a moment to slow down and really take time with my family, but I'm doing this for my family. And he's going, whoa, 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 whoa. This is where I've called you, man. I'm going to take care of that. And every moment that you fill your schedule for this, that you say you can't slow down for that, all you're saying is that you don't trust me to take it. We've got two sisters, Right? They've known Jesus is almost the entirety of his ministry. They've watched him do incredible things. They know he is Jesus, the healer. He's it. He can do it. And if only he would hurry up. If only he would hit my schedule. If only he would trust that the priority system I put in place is the right one and not the one he put in place. My brother wouldn't have died. Wouldn't have made it. It wouldn't have died. I've got an illustration. I, I've used this one multiple times. I can't take credit for it. It's uh, uh, one an incredible author and pastor known as Francis Chan. Maybe you've heard of him. That uses has used this one in the past. But I want you to imagine for a moment a really, really long rope. Right? Oh, someone moved my rope. Oh, thank you, sir. Mine is not that long, but I want you to imagine it's a lot longer than it is. Right? I want you to imagine that this rope wraps around the earth once, wraps around it twice, wraps around it a few times, 
continually wraps around it. In fact, let's just imagine the rope is infinite. It goes off on the stage somewhere back there and just keeps going. At the end of this rope, and it's almost the same color, so it's a little hard. I've got about two inches of tape on the end of this rope. And the perspective that we learn from the rope analogy is this, is that eternity is an infinitely long rope. And your life is about two inches of tape at the end of it. And in our priority system, we say, God, I can't worry about this rope because i got to work really hard at this portion of the tape so that I can retire well at this portion of the tape. And we forget about the whole rest of the rope. God's calling us to set our priorities, to slow down and see the rest of the rope for what it is and realize that we're striving, working, busy, hurry to make sure that two inches of it is perfect. Two inches. You've got two inches, folks. Two inches of rope, two inches of time, and the rest is eternity. What does that have to do with the slowdown? It's simple. It's our priority system so often. We tell God that I can't worry about your priority system because the two inches is more important than the infinitely long rope. And God has a bigger perspective than you and I and a greater priority system than you and I. So how do we do it? How do we set our priorities and slow down? The answer is you have to take the first step to hear his priority system. That's our first step. If I don't know the priority system of God, I cannot live out the priority system of God. If I don't know the priority system of God, I'm going to continue to put my own priority system in place. And God has a priority system for you. Why? Not just because. Not to make your life harder. Not so you can go, well, everybody's going to be upset with me because I'm going to drop that so that I can read this. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to, I can't work over so I'll never get that promotion so that I can go to my son's game. Or I can't do this so that I can hang out with my wife because I've made a vow to her. Date night's important. Putting a plug in there. Slow down. Grab the priority system. God's priority system. Already set up. Already in place. And what do we gain when we slow down? When we set up the priorities, we gain that perspective, right? We gain it. And probably the biggest one, our, my third point here, is that there is power in the slow. Power is in the slow. What does that mean? Hey, Aaron, I, I've got this... I, I've got this concept of priority. I've got this thought of what the priority system looks like. The band's going to make me sound real good again. Real, it's great. Uh, there's a priority system in place, and what does it equate to? It equates to perspective, and it equates to power. See, here's what I mean by this. Two sisters had seen Jesus the healer, which is good, right? Jesus the healer is good. That's not a bad thing. See, so many of my sisters out here, you've seen, you've, you're in a fast lane to get a good guy, and good guy's not bad, but if you slow down, God's got a great guy. Same thing here. Two sisters wanted Jesus the healer, and Jesus, though it, though it grieved him, knew that he couldn't be Jesus the healer in this situation. We had to slow down. We had to take two more days. We had to have more time pass because not my priority system, but his priority system. Not my will, but his will be done. Why? Because one day you're going to put Jesus the healer aside and you're going to have Jesus the resurrection and the life. Jesus the healer would have gotten there on time. Jesus the healer would have been in a hurry. Jesus the healer would have succeeded in making sure Lazarus never died. And power would have been lost. The story would have been pointless. We've heard Jesus the healer already. We've seen it done. There's nothing gained from that. But you see, God had a plan in place, a priority system in place that said, I want to bring not healing, but resurrection and life. And he wants to do the same for you. He does. Where, what do we gain ultimately by slowing down is the power of God. We do. It's right here. It's right here in this story. 
It's shown again and again in the life of Jesus in every miracle that he puts in place. There's a process, a priority system, a slowing. Does Jesus need to spit in mud and show? No, he just touches, it's done. But we don't get the quick, fast Jesus. We get the slow. Why? Because there's power in the slow. I'm in the middle of trying to buy a house and if, you're, if you've ever gone through the process, there are a lot of people that are like, hey, would you like to go 30 years in debt and you have to make a decision in the next six hours? Uh, okay, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, let's just, let's go ahead and do that. Said no one ever. You know, it's, it's a terrifying process. And you know what? We live in a society today that's so afraid they're going to miss out on the good house. They're, they're willing to jump on it. And they could be missing out on what's great in the priority system later. So a society where if you're, if you're above the age of 25 and you're single, it's time to find a good spouse. Where if you press into the priority system, well, you can't wait to get the great spouse. There's a priority system that says, wow, if I, if I can just get more money and do more things and work harder, I can get the good things. And God said, if you slow down, I've got the great things for you. The great things. There's three beautiful things I want to I want to take just a few more minutes to really to, to that I get directly from this one. Why I picked Lazarus for this, and it's this: is there's a clear depiction of a few things that we get from this. First off, in every miracle that Jesus did, he always did all the work, right? Spit in the mud, rub it, put it on the eyes, say a prayer. Well, hey, your your sight is healed. This is the only one where he asked someone else to do something. Twice, actually. In fact, he did not go into the tomb and pick Lazarus up and bring him out and go, hey, here he's alive, great. He stood outside, he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus hobbled out. I mean, you, you can imagine he was wrapped pretty tight. I thought that would be, <laughs> I want to see that happen. But uh, he's hobbling his way out. And then Jesus looks at the crowd and he says, unwrap him so he can go his way. And I always thought it was interesting because Jesus is usually such a hands-on guy. It's like, why didn't Jesus go and unwrap him? Why didn't... And I think there's, it's so clear in our slowdown and our understanding that you should understand two things very specifically. One, slowing down is going to require you to do something. It's going to require you to do something. Set the priority. Fix the perspective. How do you do that? Well, first off, again, you got to know the right priority system. When's the last time you prayed? And I don't mean it at meals. I don't mean at night. I don't mean when we're together on a Sunday morning. When's the last time you actually said, God, what's your priorities? Reveal it to me. I just, I want what you want. Take a moment. You're going to have to do something. Second, and I hope you're encouraged by this, I want you to look around the room real quickly while you just take a quick look. People to your left, people to your right. Jesus says, unwrap him and set him on his way. He says this so that there's a clear understanding when we set our priorities, when we move in the slow, when we get into the power, is that you are not doing it alone. You're not doing it alone. Again, I can sit up here all day and talk about my schedule. I can sit up here all day and talk about how busy I am. And you can sit right in your seat and talk about the five more things that you're doing on top of mine. This is not a competition. This is a prayer meeting. This is not a competition of what's going to be greater. It's that God is greater. And he can slow it down for me like he can slow it down for you. I told you they'd make me sound good, didn't I? There's power in the slow. There's power in the slow. Now, with, uh, with all the illnesses we know around, I usually, this is where I would give you a little piece of rope. I've handed these out before, cut them in little tape, so you can take it with you, remind you. Uh, there's, a, there's a few people in the audience that are actually waggling theirs from hearing this before, but this, I want you to take something with you. If you have to write it down, if you have to remember it, I want you to take that analogy. I hope that illustration goes with you. Is that whenever you're at the point where you say, I'm just too busy, like I was this week when Travis asked me to speak, the irony of that, I'm just too busy. If you're ever at the point where you think you're just too busy, remember the rope. Remember the priority system. 
God has something so great for you. It's said that every preacher only has one message. They just say it in different ways every time they get up with a different Bible verse. And if I've ever had a message, it's this. It's that God does not want you to give up the great for what's good. He doesn't want you to give up the slow lane for the fast lane because it looks good, because you want it now, when he has something so much greater for you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you're alive and active, that you're working through your word, you're working through your people, you're working through your spirit. So I pray right now in Jesus' name, spirit of the living God, move upon this place. Move upon every household that's listening out there, that every person that's sitting in these seats, Lord God, that we would take the time to realize your perspective, your priority system, your power is in the slow. Father, I pray right now for every person who is burned out, weared out, torn down in this audience or at home, Lord God, that you would refresh them, that you would teach them how to Sabbath, that rest was always in your plan, that slow was always in your plan. Father, I pray that they would continue to trust that you have them in the palm of your hand, that you're never going to let them down that you're going to provide every need as you promise. God, you are so good. Father, I ask right now if there's anyone out here who's at the very edge, anyone listening this day that's at the very edge, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, would you restore them? The people who are broken that say, I can't do it anymore. The people who are saying this marriage is too tough the people that are saying that this family is too tough, this, this road, this calling is too tough, Lord God, that you would give them that rest. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name.